There's a time in every INFJ's life where they realize they're not like everyone else. They begin to question which habits only they relate to and which habits the people around them also relate to. Yet sometimes this question never really gets answered. Welcome or welcome back, Cycle. Today we'll be talking about the top eight things only true INFJs would relate to. Before we start, have you liked and subscribed to our channel? Go ahead and be sure to click the notification bell while you're there so that you never miss a video. Alright, let's get right into it starting with number one, feeling lonely surrounded by people. Growing up often feeling misunderstood and somewhat uncomfortable around most groups of people, the INFJ is one of the only personality types that can truly relate to the experience of feeling more alone, surrounded by others than they do when they're just by themselves. For many INFJs, loneliness doesn't come from lack of socializing and friendship, but actually from the feeling of being misunderstood. They can socialize all they want, but for most INFJs, as much as they may theoretically want people to relate to their thinking process on some level, they will never reveal enough about their true selves to allow it. Most of the time, this is because INFJs can't even find the words to properly explain their intuitive feelings, and so this introverted and introspective personality type tends to feel much more comfortable in nobody else's company but their own. Number 2. Caring, even when you really don't want to INFJs care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with no breaks in between. INFJs can seem to ruminate about the simplest things in the eyes of others, but to an INFJ who sees the deeper meaning behind everything and everyone, caring is just in their nature. We're talking caring to the point of feeling deep sadness because the extremely kind and polite pizza delivery man deserves a better job, or feeling like they need to accompany the lonely elderly widow living across the street who may not even be interested in company at all. And without even touching on the topic of narcissist relationships, it's clear to see that this INFJ gift is as much as it is a curse for the highly sensitive and empathetic personality type. Caring about the world and people around them is an INFJ's biggest motivator in life, yet also ironically one of their biggest emotional and mental stressors if not used with boundaries. Number 3. Always striving for balance as much as INFJs may seem like their personality traits allow them to be naturally perfectionistic, organized, and content from the outside, only INFJs truly know the amount of dedication and persistence it takes to keep everything in order. For most people with this busy bee personality type, the term balance doesn't exist in their vocabulary, whether it be family, relationships, career, or personal development. Most INFJs can relate to the concept of going all in or not at all. Being progress obsessed, idealist at heart, this type is driven by passion. Ironically, this passion can have them so focused on one area of life that the others can easily become neglected an unfortunate downside of the INFJ living up to their own high standards. Number 4. Feeling suspicious when things are going too well in life Being the problem-solving intuitive types they are, INFJs know what it's like to attract situations and people who need a little fixing. In fact, not only do most INFJs attract these scenarios, but they live for them, with helping others being one of the only things that bring them true joy in life. So when there's a shortage of problems that need to be solved, INFJs can get a little antsy. When everything seems to be going well, they can feel extremely reluctant to let down their intuitive guard and just enjoy the moment of freedom from obligation. In fact, they may even begin suspiciously questioning why everything seems so in order, similar to the suspicion a parent has when their toddler is out of sight and being overly quiet they begin to think that there's something they're not noticing or observing properly. Number 5. Dreading when long-term plans are approaching Now, it's fair to say that most introverted personality types can agree that the making plans part of social outing is much easier than actually showing up and socialising. Unfortunately for the INFJ personality type who can easily come across as an extroverted type in certain settings, it can feel even more confusing and dreadful. 
This is because INFJs aren't usually reluctant to make plans with others and may even be the one to suggest planned social outings in the heat of the moment. In fact, they use their imagination to picture a vivid image of how the plan may unfold, which fuels the desire to really commit to plans. However, contradictorily to their convincing plan making, especially when it comes to plans that were made way ahead of time, once the date begins to approach, all of a sudden, the plans that were made don't seem as fun as they did in the moment. This is when the introverted guilt, dread, regret, and imposter feeling comes into play. Every INFJ knows the feeling of really not wanting to show up, but also really not wanting to disappoint. Number 6. Never feeling settled in life INFJs are always looking over the fence wondering if the grass is greener on the other side. Although they're able to be thankful for what they have, INFJs are naturally future-orientated, meaning they are always wondering what the next best move in life would be. Now, there's a stereotypical belief that INFJs won't settle for anything less than glorious in life. And while there is some truth in that, considering their complex imaginative insights and ability to see things from a big picture perspective, it's not entirely what makes them feel so unsettled in life. In fact, INFJs aren't necessarily seeking out the most glorious life for themselves, but rather the life that feels most suited to their idea of true happiness and abundance. They can see right through the facade of what most people think brings genuine happiness in life and instead take their own beaten path. And although they can be quite hard on themselves, INFJs know deep down what they deserve because of the qualities they bring to the table. Number 7. Feeling surprised at your extroverted nature Sometimes INFJs can surprise themselves just as much as they surprise others when their extroverted side is unleashed. Although this type can easily put on an extroverted front in social situations, it's a rare occurrence to see the actual relaxed extroverted side of the otherwise introverted INFJ. It takes a long-term relationship, a trusted group of people, and sometimes even a drink or two, for the INFJ to quiet their over-analytical minds and just enjoy the moment. Much like the morning after a misbehaved night out, did they give away too much information about themselves? Did they use their social filter when talking about their thoughts? It's almost as if their analytical selves return full force, demanding answers in order to thoroughly process what had happened during their uncontrolled, extroverted outlash, otherwise known to others as just having a good time. And number eight, the struggle of being drawn to deep emotional people. Mystery and deep emotions call for an INFJ like no other personality trait. This analytical and imaginative type loves decoding and understanding people of all types, but the odd and mysterious soul holds a special place in an INFJ's heart. Whether it's sheer curiosity, empathy, attraction, or all three, the INFJ can easily become intrigued by deeply emotional people, and sometimes this attraction causes them serious trouble down the road, as if the empathetic nature and high expectations of the INFJ collide, driving this people-saving type drawn to people who need saving. While this acts as one of the INFJ's greatest strengths, it surely attracts people who carry undealt with emotional baggage that is far beyond the means of being able to fix with a sprinkle of INFJ empathy. Well, that's it for today, Cycles. So, if you're an INFJ personality type, did you resonate with these eight points? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to leave us a like, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel for more Cycle videos.